I'm Patrick, I'm the road product manager for Merida and we just finished our bike packing trip in lovely UK and I would like to explain you some details about our bikes and the ideas behind and what we did and why this bike was uh, great for the two days we had here. Uh, first of all, this is our, let's say, Swiss Army knife of bicycles. Um, mainly designed as a road bike, but has great cap capabilities to ride off-road. Um, the geometry basically is the heart of the bicycle. Um, what we did, it's a, let's call it MTB inspired geometry. So we have a relatively long reach combined with a short stem. Additionally, with a very, very long head tube. Um, having this combination gives the rider a really unique ride. Um, there are some, let's call it endurance geometries out on the market, but it's very hard to distinguish a, a sportive road bike and an endurance road bike for many people just sitting on the bike. So with this bicycle, every person with no experience on the bike will notice the difference to a traditional road bike. In the end, um, the position on the bike is much more upright. Um, still, uh, it's very nimble because of the short stem um, and gives a really secure and um, comfort feeling on the bike. At the same time, um, it offers a lot of safety because when you go downhill, um, you are actually able to ride in the drops. On many road bike designs, people are not able to ride in the drops uh, because it's way too sportive. They can't stretch their back too, too much. So with this design, the person can ride easily in the drops and brake. Especially when you go off-road, sometimes it's quite hard to keep control because you're just um, holding the bicycle with two fingers uh, and, and pulling on the brakes. But with this design, you can ride it properly, brake it with one single finger and still have a very balanced center of gravity. Because imagine if you go downhill, your center of gravity moves forward and sometimes on a cross bike, for example, you have the feeling that you fall over. With this bike, if you don't have that, you can descend comfortably in the drops. And at the same time, even if you ride on the flat, uh, riding the drops and changing the position of the bike is even uh, another point of comfort and feels good if you ride for a couple of hours. So that's the main part of the geometry. And I think this is the, the core of a bicycle because when you buy a bicycle, uh, you don't buy parts, you buy the complete package. And one important part is the geometry of the bike. Additionally to its geometry, um, another important feature is the tire cranes of the bicycle. Um, we have our own, or we have a co-junction with Maxxis, um, a designed a tire, which is basically uh, a slick tire. Um, and if you go outside, you have some, some knobs, which add a little bit of traction when you go off-road. Um, you can play a little bit with the tire pressure. So we recommend if you're riding mainly road, you pump it up to a higher pressure. If you add a little bit of off-road, you lower the pressure and let the side knobs um, grip a little bit more um, to, to get a little more traction uh, on the dirt. Um, the stock tire is 35 millimeters. Um, no problem to add fenders if it's getting a little bit uh, colder and wet. Um, the clearance on, uh, on 700C is up to 44 millimeters, so quite big. Um, if you go to 650B, which is no problem, you can use a 650B tire. Uh, you can go up to 2.1, 2.2, depending on the manufacturer. They vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, but let's say you can go to 52, 53 millimeters, no problem, uh, measurable size. So this is a huge benefit. And imagine you have a trail bike at home um, in the 650B, take out the wheels, put it in that bike, and add, again, more versatility to your ride. Choose the way you want to tune up uh, your bike and how you want to ride it. Um, I am also uh, a big believer of uh, one bike drivetrains for that type of riding. Um, our bikes are equipped with a um, 44 front chain ring and in this case we have a 1042. So the main idea is having a simpler system. So you, if it's simpler you can brake less, um, it's quieter um, and it saves weight in the end a little bit. So what a lot of people are afraid of is when they hear about a one by system, they run out of gears, um, especially on the climbs and they have, you know, they're scared of pushing the bike up, up the hill. But um, 
if we do a rational comparison to a standard compact chain ring and a cassette and to this system, this actually climbs better with a 44 front chain ring and a 42 rear than a traditional 34 in the front and a 32 in the rear. So um, that's, you know, not a fear you should have. And even if you were saying, okay, what, what should I do on the flat sections? Do I run out of gears there? Probably not, because with a 44 and a 10 in the rear, you can easily go up to 40K on the flat. And I think not too many people will push it to that kind of speed. So even with a higher cadence, you can go up to 40, 45, 46K kilometers per hour, which is, you know, not the main purpose of the bike. So you can join a group ride. Uh, if you have friends uh, riding at the weekend during the group ride on the road bike, uh, I think the bike is perfectly capable uh, to manage all of that. Um, and again, uh, having that kind of chain ring in the front, if you say, okay, I want to go on a longer bike packing trip, you know, with a little bit more gear on it, uh, go up to a smaller one, go up to 40 and so um, go reasonable fast and flat and have more, you know, versatility on the climbs, which you can't do on a standard road um, setup. Not to mention that these, these, these bikes will all come with disc brakes, um, which is, you know, mandatory almost uh, for such type of bike. Um, besides, you know, adding safety, this is the only way you can go to bigger tires. It's not possible on a, on a standard uh, caliper brake um, to have tires bigger than 30 millimeter. So this is um, the type. We have carbon and alloy frames, um, both share the same concept of geometry. That's important. So, uh, you know, long reach, short stem, uh, long, uh, long uh, head tube. Um, both share at the same time the tire clearance um, and all the features. Uh, the major difference is just the frame. The fork is for all the bikes similar. It's a full carbon fork um, on alloy and then carbon frame. Um, the major difference is just the carbon frame. Um, for example, this bicycle on our hind uh, line weighs slightly below eight kilograms, uh, which is pretty light. And, and it's a nice example of, you know, how, how the transition between a mountain bike and a road bike uh, comes to such a, you know, call it gravel bike. Um, for example, this type of wheelset is a traditional mountain bike wheelset. So we put that 29er wheelset in this bicycle because we believe it's a, it's a nice and reasonable um, inner width, rim width. Um, and a good combination of weight. So, uh, yeah, this is a nice example how, uh, you know, bikes from the road and mountain bike come together in this category. Again, you can see it also a little bit on the, uh, on the seat post. So we um, enlarged the diameter here to traditional, from a traditional 27.2 to 30.9 millimeters seat post diameter, which has two major benefits. One is um, if you put on some gear, you know, the, the, imagine you have another, you know, 10 kilograms pulling on the saddle. So it's nicer if you have a little bit more um, strength here. Yeah. And the other hand, uh, you can add a dropper post. So this is an additional, you know, trend which might come that people take it maybe with the 650 uh, 650B wheels and uh, mountain bike tires towards some more, you know, off-road riding. No problem, you can add a dropper post, which is a quite nice feature. Um, so. As you can see, there are uh, categories mixing. Um, on this bicycles, we also use a little bit of wider saddles. So on the traditional road bikes, you have a 134 millimeter width of saddle. So here we go to 142 um, because this is also which, which comes with the traditional uh, with the with the new geometry is as you go towards a more upright position, you have much more you have a little bit more pressure on the saddle. So that's why it's important to add. A little bit more width to the saddle to have a, you know a more reasonable pressure on the saddle yeah that's the biggest difference this is quite neat we have a let's call it a hidden seat clamp here uh, which is a nice design element um, and um, we could enlarge we have a very large um, surface inside the seat clamp which you know transfers the the force on the seat post quite reasonably um, which is a nice feature we have on the, on the carbon uh, frames. Um, what we also brought to this bike, bicycle is, you might, you might know it already from our road, standard road bikes, 
It's the Merida cooler, um, especially on the rear, uh, that helps basically to um, lower the recovery time of the brakes if you go downhill. Um, and at the same time, it stops the brake from you know, getting way too hot. Uh, we think it's, a, it's important to have it here on the carbon frame because all the thermal energy needs to go somewhere. Um, on the rear, it's quite hot because you don't have too much airflow. So the heat stays a little bit longer there. Um, so the cooler basically enlarges the surface of the brake caliper and helps to transfer the heat uh, to its surrounding. And especially on carbon bikes, um, we don't think it's too smart having, you know, uh, a, a space with too much of a heat and too much of an energy um, going into the fibers. They are not ideal, like on the alloy frame, um, to take take the heat. So it's a, it's just a nice feature, um, and maybe even a safety feature if you go with the, all the gear downhill for a longer time. Um, that helps a lot. A great feature about this bike is, especially for people who want to go on a bike packing trip, which is, which is just a nice experience of traveling and getting to know um, your surroundings, is that this bike comes with a lot of attachment points. So we have water bottle mounts here and here for traditional stuff. But then we have a water bottle mount here, uh, which is quite nice for people who travel with a you know, gasoline burner or something because you can uh, store it here. We have some mounts here and here, which are either great for water, for carrying water, or just to use the special cage we offer at Merida with a dry bag, uh, put in a sleeping bag or sleeping pad. Um, so this is actually a really versatile bicycle, either for you know working out here or going on a bikepacking trip. Of course, for having a very versatile bike, it's almost mandatory to have uh, get an um, attachment for fenders. So we have little holes here. Um, you basically put on the fender stays directly in the holes, attach them uh, or tighten them with a little Allen screw over here. And then you have attachment points here, here for the fenders. We at Merida offer special design fenders for that kind of system, as well as a rack. So there are still people who want to do on a, want to do a traditional, you know, touring bicycle trip. So they can buy a perfectly designed rack for this type of bike and put on the Ortli bags. And um, we even keep, kept this in mind that it is important to have uh, a relatively long rear end or chain stays if you want to travel with the standard Ortli bags, because there are many bike designs out there where you hit your, your heel against the Ortli bag while you're paddling. So we made sure that you can't hit your heel with that um, type of design. Um, as, even if you have long, uh, big, uh, big shoes, uh, it's quite unlikely that you're gonna hit that. So yeah, it's a, like I said, it's one of our most versatile bikes or even one of the most versatile bikes right now on the bicycle market. Thanks for watching the video and um, I hope you have the time to go to your local Merida dealer and uh, to check this you know, unique bike out in person. Um, make yourself uh, an own opinion of what I've told and um, yeah, thanks. Thank you.